Egyptian fruit bats trade food for sex Female Egyptian fruit bats living in captivity will consistently take food right from the mouths of their male peers. Now the Tel Aviv University team that made that discovery is back with new evidence to explain why the males put up with it. As reported in Current Biology on May 23, these male Egyptian fruit bats are repaid for their tolerance and generosity with sex. We found a strong relationship between producer-scrounger feeding interactions and reproduction, says lead author Professor Yossi Yovel of TAU's George S. Wise Faculty of Life Sciences. Namely, females bore pups of the males they most often scrounged food from. Three to four months before mating, the females start scrounging for food from several males. Then they eventually mate with one of the males, the one with which they forged the strongest bond. Originally, we wondered, why do the producers of food allow scroungers to take food from their mouths? Maybe they're stronger? But we found that most of the scroungers are female, and so we considered the possibility that females trade mating for food. This was our hypothesis, and, indeed, we found that this is the case. There are a variety of potential reasons why animals might be willing to share food. In some cases, food is shared with relatives. In others, the cost of defending food resources may be too great. But it's also possible that sharing food sometimes comes with other delayed benefits, including sex. Professor Yuval's team earlier found after watching three captive bat colonies over the course of a year that individuals either collected food for themselves or scrounged it from other individuals. That begged the question, why do males allow other individuals and primarily females to literally take food out of their mouths? Professor Yovel's observations revealed that those foraging interactions start many weeks before mating begins. Over time, the females intensify interactions with specific males before eventually mating with one of them. To explore the food for sex hypothesis in the new study, the researchers monitored producer-scrounger interactions of a captive Egyptian fruit bat colony for more than a year. They later determined the paternity of the pups that were born in the colony based on genetics. The results were quite clear. Females gave birth to the young of males from which they had scrounged food, explains Professor Yeovil. The findings lend support for the food for sex hypothesis in this species. There were some other intriguing findings. For example, the researchers found that there was almost no overlap among males preferred by each female. It suggests that females choose males to scrounge from based on some form of individual preference. Those personal preferences also changed from year to year. Going forward, we intend to explore how these relationships evolve and change over many years, concludes Professor Yeovil. We would also like to find out how these interactions observed in captivity play out in wild populations. Story source. Materials provided by American Friends of Tel Aviv University. Note, content may be edited for style and length. Journal reference. Lee Harton, Yosef Pratt, Shachar Ben Cohen, Roy Dorr, Yossi Yovel. Food for Sex in Bats Revealed as Producer Males Reproduce with Scrounging Females. Current Biology, 2019, doi, 10.1016, j.cub.2019.04.066 Older male crickets attract more females, but mate less Older male crickets are better at getting females to live with them, but they mate less than younger rivals once they find a partner. Meanwhile younger males have a harder time enticing females back to their burrows, but more mating happens if they succeed. University of Exeter scientists studied field crickets to see if a male's age affected how attractive females found them. Females choose mates to get the best genes for their offspring, said Dr. Rolando Rodriguez Munoz of the Center for Ecology and Conservation on the University of Exeter's Penryn campus in Cornwall. It's possible that the oldest males have the best genes because they've shown they can live for a long time. On the other hand, females might favor younger males whose sperm have not accumulated possibly harmful mutations that will be passed on to offspring. Our results show a mixed picture, with older males more successful at pairing up with females, but mating less frequently once paired. The study found both pairing and mating were linked to successful reproduction, and there was no relationship between a male's age at the time of mating and how many offspring he had. It seems that the age of a male is a poor guide to his suitability as a mate, said Professor Tom Tregenza. 
This was reflected in the opposing effects it had on their success in pairing up and mating with females. The adult life of field crickets last just a few weeks, but previous research showed males get old in the sense of declining as they age. Choosing an older male might seem like a good strategy for finding a long-lived male, but the new study found this was only partially effective, as younger males may live to the same or even older ages than those that emerged earlier in the year than them. The study used 10 years of video monitoring of all the crickets in a Spanish meadow. The Exeter researchers have just launched an online game, Cricket Tales, http colon slash slash cricket dash tales dot x dot ac dot uk. Players will help analyze over a million hours of videos of crickets to understand how insects may be affected by climate change. The paper, published in the journal Animal Behavior, is entitled, Older Males Attract More Females But Get Less Matings in a Wild Field Cricket. Story Source. Materials provided by University of Exeter. Note, content may be edited for style and length. Journal Reference. Rolando Rodriguez Munoz, Paul Hopwood, David Fisher, Ian Skiko, Rachel Tucker, Catherine Woodcock, John Slate, Craig Walling, Tom Tregenza. Older males attract more females but get fewer matings in a wild field cricket. Animal Behavior, 2019, 153-21 doi, 101016 j.anbehave.2019.04.011 study predicts shift to smaller animals over next century researchers at the University of Southampton have forecast a worldwide move towards smaller birds and mammals over the next 100 years. In the future, small, fast-lived, highly fertile, insect-eating animals, which can thrive in a wide variety of habitats, will predominate. These winners include rodents, such as dwarf gerbil, and songbirds, such as the white-browed sparrow weaver. Less adaptable, slow-lived species, requiring specialist environmental conditions, will likely fall victim of extinction. These losers include the tawny eagle and black rhinoceros. The researchers predict the average body mass of mammals specifically will collectively reduce by 25% over the next century. This decline represents a large, accelerated change when compared with the 14% body size reduction observed in species from 130,000 years ago until today. Findings are published in detail in the journal Nature Communications. Rob Cook is lead author on this work and a postgraduate researcher at the University of Southampton. He comments, by far the biggest threat to birds and mammals is humankind, with habitats being destroyed due to our impact on the planet, such as deforestation, hunting, intensive farming, urbanization and the effects of global warming. The substantial downsizing of species which we forecast could incur further negative impacts for the long-term sustainability of ecology and evolution. This downsizing may be happening due to the effects of ecological change but, ironically, with the loss of species which perform unique functions within our global ecosystem, it could also end up as a driver of change too. The research team focused on 15,484 living land mammals and birds and considered five characteristics that relate to the role of each species in nature, body mass, litter, clutch size, breadth of habitat, diet and length of time between generations. In addition, the researchers used the International Union for Conservation of Nature IUCN, Red List of Threatened Species to determine which animals are most likely to become extinct in the next century. They used modern statistical tools to combine all this data to make their projections and evaluate the loss of biodiversity. Felix Eigenbrod, professor at the University of Southampton, says, We have demonstrated that the projected loss of mammals and birds will not be ecologically random, rather a selective process where certain creatures will be filtered out depending on their traits and vulnerability to ecological change. Amanda Bates, research chair at Memorial University in Canada, says, Extinctions were previously viewed as tragic, deterministic inevitabilities, but they can also be seen as opportunities for targeted conservation actions. As long as a species that is projected to become extinct persists, there is time for conservation action and we hope research such as ours can help guide this. The research team hope further studies can be carried out to look in more detail at the longer-term effect of species becoming extinct on habitats and ecosystems. Table scraps can be used to reduce reliance on fossil fuels Wasted food can be affordably turned into a clean substitute for fossil fuels. 
new technology developed by researchers at the University of Waterloo engineers natural fermentation to produce a biodegradable chemical that can be refined as a source of energy. The chemical could also be used to replace petroleum-based chemicals in a host of products including drugs and plastic packaging. People like me, environmental biotechnologists, look at food waste as a tremendous resource, said Hung Sul Lee, a civil and environmental engineering professor at Waterloo. With the right technologies, we can extract numerous useful chemicals and fuel from it. Wasted food in North America adds up to about 400 kilograms per person per year, with the worldwide economic loss estimated at $1.3 trillion every year. Most of that discarded food goes into landfills. Technology already exists to reduce the environmental impact by diverting food waste, collecting methane gas as it is broken down by microorganisms and burning the gas to produce electricity. But Lee said that system, known as anaerobic digestion, ultimately yields little or no net benefits when the high costs of food waste mixing and wastewater treatment are taken into account. The technology developed at Waterloo dramatically cuts those costs by collecting and recirculating leachate, a microbial cocktail mixed with microorganisms and nutrients, that trickles through the food waste in holding tanks, rather than stimulating biodegradation by intensive mixing. As they eat and digest food waste, the microorganisms in those tanks also spit out a chemical byproduct called carboxylate, which has numerous potential uses as a substitute for petroleum, or crude oil. The amount of food we waste is staggering, said Lee, director of the Waterloo Environmental Biotechnology Lab. That's what motivated me to find a better way to utilize it to mitigate the damage caused by fossil fuels. In addition to being cheaper and more productive than existing technology, he said, the system is designed for use on small and medium scales. Even small towns could have their own systems, said Lee, who collaborates with GHD, a consulting firm in the clean technology market. Food waste collected in green bin programs wouldn't have to be transported long distances to enormous, centralized facilities. The next step in the research involves testing the technology on a larger scale, with a long-term goal to commercialize it within four to five years. The latest in a series of papers on the work, food waste treatment with a leachate bed reactor, effects of inoculum to substrate ratio and reactor design, appears in the journal Bioresource Technology. Story Source. Materials provided by University of Waterloo. Note, content may be edited for style and length. Did Leonardo da Vinci have ADHD?